6.6 practice problems. Based off of the reaction represented in the chemical equation shown above, what is the amount of heat released when four moles of um, hydrosulfuric acid reacts with nine moles of oxygen? So we can see that um, we are going to uh, be dealing with this equation here. We have four moles of the uh, hydrosulfuric acid and nine moles of oxygen. When I look here at the balanced chemical equation, I can see that if I were to double this, then um, I would end up with only six moles of oxygen. However, I would have my four moles of the hydrosulfuric acid, which means that the uh, nine moles of oxygen, that's going to be my excess reagent. And so I'm going to be basing my answer off of uh, the amount of hydrosulfuric acid amount rather than the amount of oxygen. Now, this is my delta H for uh, this balanced equation. If I were to double it, then I would get twice the amount of heat released. So this times two would give me 2240 kilojoules. Uh, the chemical equation shown above represents the reaction between magnesium solid and hydrochloric acid. When 12.15 grams of magnesium is added to 500 milliliters of a 4 molar hydrochloric acid solution, 95 kilojoules of heat is released. The experiment is repeated with 24.3 grams of magnesium and 500 milliliters of the 4 molar hydrochloric acid. Which of the following gives the correct value for the amount of heat released for this reaction? So um, I see that I have doubled the amount of uh, magnesium here from here to here. This is doubled. And I have kept my amount of hydrochloric acid the same. Now this is 500 mils of a four molar solution, which means that I have uh, two moles of hydrochloric acid. And that means that my limit is going to be one mole of magnesium. Initially, I had 12.15 grams, and the molar mass of magnesium is 24.3 grams, uh, which means that initially I had 0.5 moles to 2 moles, which was within limit. And here I have uh, 1 mole to 2 moles, which is the stated ratio. So that means that we have exactly the amount of each reactant that we would need. We don't have any excess in either. So that means that we can just go ahead and say that this is twice the amount of uh, reactant. So that means we get twice the amount of heat. So that would be 95 times two or 190 kilojoules. The chemical equation above represents the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. When equal volumes of one molar hydrochloric acid and one molar sodium hydroxide are mixed, 57.1 kilojoules of heat is released. If the experiment is repeated with two molar hydrochloric acid, how much heat would be released? So if we are um, dealing with uh, equal molar and uh, equal volume, Okay, equal volumes of the same molarity, and this is our balanced chemical equation where you can see that the ratio is gonna be one to one. Uh, even if I were to double the amount of hydrochloric acid, if I did not double the amount of sodium hydroxide at the same time, I don't have enough sodium hydroxide to meet that new excess of hydrochloric acid. So my amount of heat is going to be exactly the same at 57.1 kilojoules. The elements K and uh, Cl react directly to form uh, potassium chloride according to the equation above. How much heat is released or absorbed when uh, 0 0.05 moles of chlorine is formed uh, from the potassium chloride? So uh, here we have uh, our delta H. We can see that our delta H is negative. This means that this is going to be exothermic. And so we are going to be releasing that heat, not absorbing the heat. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of any of the answers that say that we are absorbing uh, any heat. 
then I need to go ahead and figure out uh, what's going on here. So I can see that um, initially this is half a mole of chlorine um, in my original uh, balanced chemical equation, and this is 0 0.05 moles, so this is one tenth the amount. So that means that this is going to be uh, one tenth the amount uh, that we have here in our delta H. Um, I just realized that this is actually uh, going in the uh, Ford reaction here, but our problem, we are um, going to be uh, going in the opposite direction, which means that this is now positive. And so this is endothermic, since we are going in the opposite direction. So we are dealing with an endothermic reaction where we are actually absorbing that heat. And um, we have a tenth here. So a tenth of this is going to be uh, 43.7 uh, kilojoules. And that is absorbed, again, because we are going in the reverse direction. And so therefore, we are going to be absorbing rather than um, releasing heat. Okay. Um, a student is trying to determine the heat of reaction for the acid-base neutralization uh, reaction represented above. The student uses 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide and 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid solutions. Which of the following situations by itself would most likely result in the least error of the calculated uh, value for the heat of reaction. So we're, we're, all of these are going to be mistakes, but we're going to look for the thing that is going to cause the least amount of trouble for us. So as I look through these, um, A says the thermometer was incorrectly calibrated to, to read 0.5 Celsius degrees too high during the procedure. So it being calibrated to read 0.5 Celsius uh, too high uh, probably means that it read 0.5 too high at the beginning, point th throughout, higher and stuff. So this would uh, end up kind of coming to a wash with our delta T. So this is something that wouldn't uh, produce too much error, but let's see if there's anything that would produce less. The volume of acid solution added to the calorimeter was actually one mil less than that of which was recorded. This is going to change our number of uh, moles, our mass of uh, the uh, acid that produced uh, that amount of heat. So that is going to result in quite a large error here. Obviously, the larger the uh, volume differential, the larger the error, but uh, definitely more than something that could be kind of washed out with that delta. The calorimeter was poorly insulated and some of the heat escaped to the atmosphere during the procedure. Uh, that's going to produce a, a pretty big problem for us because any amount of heat that is released into the overall atmosphere, uh, that is going to be heat that we do not measure and therefore a pretty large error. The actual molarity of the base is 0.53, but was recorded at, as 0.5. Again, this is going to change the number of moles that we are dealing with, um, and that is going to cause quite a large problem here. The final temperature of the mixture was taken before the contents of the calorimeter had reached thermal equilibrium. That is also going to uh, cause quite the, quite the issue. So A being uh, a systemic error that is going to be at the very beginning and at the very end and will wash out with the uh, delta being the thing that we are uh, caring about for uh, temperature, that is going to cause the least amount of trouble. So A is going to be my answer choice. Uh, the elements potassium and chlorine react directly to form the compound potassium chloride according to the equation above. Which of the values for delta H um, for the process in the table are, uh, is or are less than zero, i.e. indicates an exothermic reaction here. So um, we know that uh, the total Ford reaction here is going to be uh, exothermic. And so uh, I am going to go ahead and look for things that would show that. I can see that V is nowhere in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and ignore, ignore that as a, a, a possibility. Uh, w, X, Y, and Z are all going to be labeled, so that's, that's good here, okay? Um, we are going to be looking for something 
that uh, kind of replicates this here. So uh, potassium forming an ion. Uh, we are going to uh, need to input energy in order to take away that electron here. So this would be endothermic. So anything that says W, I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, no to that. Um, breaking this uh, diatomic bond here and forcing the chlorine to be by itself when chlorine really, really wants to be uh, buddied up at all times, that's also going to cause uh, going to require energy to be input into the system. So that's also going to be exothermic. So anything that says X is also going to be eliminated. Uh, chlorine capturing that electron and uh, going ahead and being in a state where it uh, uh, has an electron configuration that is going to most closely match that of a noble gas. This is a desired state for chlorine, so that's good. And then uh, the cation and anion uh, being able to come together and form um, the ionic compound that is also going to be a desirable state. So that's also going to be exothermic. That's going to release energy. Um, we are uh, going to say that both of those are exothermic and that would leave us with answer choice B as our only answer choice that has um, the options that we uh, selected.